So this is optics lesson one, and this is refraction. So what is refraction? Refraction occurs when a wave passes across a boundary. And when a wave passes across a boundary, typically the wave speed would change. And it's typically due to the density, uh, th well, the difference in densities between the materials. So this top one, this might be, this might be air. And this could be glass or water. Air and the, let's say it's glass, air and glass have a different density. So when the wave approaches the boundary, it would slow down. And when it slows down, it causes a change in direction. And we call that change in direction refraction. The different substances we call media or a medium. So the change of speed usually, but not always, results in the direction of travel of the wave changing. Remember, if you want to take any more, just pause. And I'll keep moving on. So the refraction of light. So as you can see, this light comes in to this boundary, this air glass boundary. And it refracts towards the normal. So less to more optically dense transition, so air to glass. So when you enter a material that is more dense, you will always get a refraction towards the normal. So we've got this label, we've got angle of incidence, we've got the angle of refraction. Normal, remember the angles are drawn from the normals. Normals at 90 degrees to the surface. So on this one, light goes in, refracts towards the normal. So light bends towards the normal. And the angle of refraction is less than the angle of incidence. That's when we go from less dense to more dense. So the other way around, if we go from more dense, a more dense medium to a less dense medium, you get the opposite. So the light would refract away from the normal. So light bends away from the normal. And the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence. So that's more dense to less dense. So to reiterate, when we go less dense to more dense, the angle of refraction is smaller. And then when we go more dense to less dense, the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence. Let's move on. So refractive index N. So refractive index is just a number and it's a ratio of the wave speeds. So to calculate it, we could say that the refractive index N is equal to the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in whatever substance we're looking at. So the, the number n for the refractive index is dimensionless, and it could be thought of as, so say we had, let's look at say glass, which has a refractive index of 1.5. The refractive index simply states that the in glass light, the speed of light will be 1.5 times less than it is in a vacuum. That's essentially what it is. So refractive index is a ratio of the wave speeds. And we'll look at some examples of this. Remember it's dimensionless as we've got meters per second divided by meters per second. So let's do this question. So you want to pause and have a go. When light passes from air to glass, its speed falls from three times 10 to the eight meters per second to two times 10 to the eight meters per second. Calculate the refractive index of the glass. So the refractive index n is equal to speed of light in the vacuum, three times 10 to the eight, divided by the speed of light in the material, which is two times 10 to the eight. The times 10 to the eight is canceled and we're left with simply with three over two, which is 1.5. The refractive index of, of most glass is approximately 1.5, but will differ slightly. There will be a range of values depending on the type of glass. Let's move on. So in this one, the refractive index of water is approximately 1.33. Calculate the speed of light in water. If you want to pause and have a go at that. So the speed of light in the substance is simply the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, in a vacuum or air, divided by the refractive index of 1.33. And that gives us a speed of light in water to be equal to 
2.3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Let's move on from there. So some examples of refractive index. So normally measured with respect to a vacuum as the first medium. So a vacuum is 1 by definition. Air, 1.00293. So we take this to be 1.0. And that air one is the only one that you need to remember. Ice is 1.31. Water, 1.33. Alcohol, 1.36. Glass, which varies as we just discussed, 1.5. And something like diamond is 2.4. Right, the law of refraction, or Snell's law. So this is simply N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. Right, again at the bottom. So N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. Quite a long equation. So N1 would be the refractive index of substance 1. So in this instance, that would be the air. And let's say this is glass. So N1 would be the refractive index of air. Sine theta 1 is the sine of angle 1, this one. N2 is the refractive index of the material that it goes into. So in this instance, it would be the glass. And sine theta 2 is simply sine of this angle of theta 2. Snell's law, very useful. Let's move on. So let's look at this question. Calculate the angle of refraction when light passes from air into glass. So I need to give you a couple of data points here. So air is the one that we need to know. So air is n equals one. And for this one, the glass, so I'll write ng for the glass. We'll say it's 1.5. And if you want to calculate that, pause and please do so. And then I'll take you through the answer. So, we're going from air into glass. And the angle of incidence, which is the angle in the air, is 30 degrees. So let's write the equation. So M1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. And we look for the angle of refraction. The angle of refraction will be the second angle. So we need to divide by N2, then do inverse sine. So theta 2 is equal to, so it's M1 sine, well, the inverse sine, sorry. So it's inverse sine first of M1 sine theta 1 divided by N2. Then we just need to simply put our numbers in. So we've got inverse sine of N1, so N1's the air, so that's 1, times sine theta 1, so sine theta divided by N2, which is the glass is 1.5. Inverse sine of that gives us an angle of 19.5 degrees. And that makes sense as well if you think about it, because we're going from air to glass, glass is more dense. And from what we learned earlier, as light travels from a less dense to an optically more dense medium, the angle of refraction should go towards the normal. And this angle is smaller. So we've gone from 30 degrees to 19.5, and physically, it makes sense. Okay, let's move on. So I need to complete this table. So let's pause and have a go. And then I'll go through the answers. So the answers are... If you want to check these... I will go through these in a moment in case you got any of these wrong. If you got them right, then you'll be able to leave the video. If not, or you need some help on them, I'll go through each of these individually and show you the working out to get each answer. So let's do the first one. So for each of these, we're going to be using the equation, the M1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. So for the first one, we're finding theta 2.
So theta 2 is inverse sine. M1 sine theta 1. So let's just put the numbers in. So N1 is 1. Times sine theta 1. So sine 50. Divided by N2. Which is 1.33. And if we calculate that we get. The 35.2 degrees. Let's do the next one. So we're finding theta 2 again. So theta 2 is m1 sine theta 1 divided by m2. Obviously the inverse sine as well. So m1 is 1.5 times sine theta 1. So times sine theta. Divided by fractor of x2, which is 1. Put it in our calculator. 48.6 degrees. Let's do the third one. So the third one we find in theta 1. So sine theta 1 is n2 sine theta 2 over m1. And then we need to do the inverse sine. So theta 1 is equal to the inverse sine of n2 sine theta 2 over m1. So n2 is 1.5 times sine theta 2, so times sine 50, and then divide by m1, which is 1.33. Calculate that, we get 59.8 degrees. And let's do the fourth one. So the fourth one, so we're using m1 sine theta 1, equals n2 sine theta 2, and we want theta 2. So theta 2 is equal to the inverse sine of m1 sine theta 1 divided by n2. So n1 is 1 times sine theta 1 sine 50 divided by n2 which is 2.4 which gives us an angle 18.6 degrees and then the last one, we find in the refractive index. So again, N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. We're finding N2. So N2 is simply M1 sine theta 1. M1 sine theta 1 divided by sine theta 2. So M1 is 1 times sine theta 1, which is sine 50. Divided by sine theta, and that gives us a refractive index of 1.5. And it says medium unknown, but you should know that 1.5 will be some type of glass. Hopefully that's okay, and that makes sense. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you soon.